Then we'll see about Wilson's disease. So Wilson's disease is all our favorite during our MBBS time also. So it is also an autosomal recessive condition caused due to a mutation in ATP7B gene. So this ATP7B gene is present on chromosome 13Q and this ATP7B is responsible for copper excretion in the liver. So when this is mutated, copper is not getting excreted from the liver into the bile. So copper gets accumulated inside the liver. So there will be increased copper. And the copper transport protein which is ceruloplasmin is going to be decreased. So, ceruloplasmin is the one which will take up this copper and deliver to the various tissues which are in need of it. So, copper is a cofactor for many of the enzymes in the body. So, ceruloplasmin is needed to transport this copper. So, in this condition, there is going to be increased copper and decreased ceruloplasmin. So, this increased copper which is accumulating in the liver at certain point of time, it is going to overflow from the liver. Or when this uh, accumulation is in the liver is present, it is going to cause necrosis of the hepatocytes. So, when hepatocyte necrosis Process is there, there also it will spill over into the blood. So, once it enters into the blood, it is going to go and deposit in various organs, and there again it is going to cause diseases. So, let us see the clinical features of Wilson's disease starting with hemolytic anemia. So, I told the excess copper which is going to overflow is going to uh, enter into the blood and firstly it is going to affect the RBCs. So, RBCs are going to be very sensitive for copper. So, excess of copper will cause lysis of the RBCs. So, that will result in hemolytic anemia. So, also this copper is a one of the uh, it, it, it is it is implicated in the Fenton's reaction right so Fenton's reaction can be because of copper and iron right so this Fenton's reaction can happen and it can result in the formation of free radicals that again is going to damage the RPCs resulting in hemolysis then in the liver all kind of diseases can be seen that is it can present with a fulminant hepatitis or an acute hepatitis or a chronic hepatitis or a cirrhotic liver or even hepatocellular carcinoma. So, starting with steatosis till cirrhosis, it can present with any kind of liver disease that is called as whole spectrum. So, whole spectrum of the liver disease is going to be present in liver disease of Wilson's disease. So, this copper deposition can also happen in the brain. So, specifically in the basal ganglia of the brain, especially in the putamen region. So, in the putamen, it is going to cause atrophy and cavitation. So, this is called as hepatolenticular degeneration. Hepato for liver, lenticular means basal ganglia. So, putamen is going to be atrophied and show cavitation. And this can result in neuropsychiatric manifestations. So, extrapyramidal kind of symptoms like rigidity, confusion, then involuntary movements, uh, lack of coordination, all of these uh, things can be seen along with that psychiatric manifestations can also be present in Wilson's disease. So, uh, actually it can present with more than 99 percentage of the patients present with uh, neuropsychiatric manifestations and it is going to be associated with presence of KF ring. So, I will tell what is KF ring in a while. So, if, uh, since basal ganglia is being affected, the Parkinson's, Parkinsonism, which was also due to dopaminergic neurons deficiency in the basal ganglia. So, here again, Wilson's disease can present with Parkinsonism. Okay, So, Parkinsonism can be seen in Wilson's disease as well. So, in pa pa Parkinsonism, you see this presence of Lewy bodies, right? So, Lewy bodies, remember, what was the composition of it? It was alpha synuclein, right? So, and this is this will have the characteristic darker center and a peripheral halo around it. So, this Lewy bodies can be seen in Wilson's disease as well. So, the copper can also deposit in the eye. So, where in the eye two uh, manifestations can happen. So, first thing will be the Kaser Fleischer ring which is called as the KF ring and this is going to deposit in the decimates membrane of the cornea. So, decimates membrane in the cornea this copper is going to deposit. So, this is what we see as this greenish brown kind of deposit in the eye. So, in slit lamp examination also we can find it. Other than that, this copper is also responsible for a special type of cataract called as sunflower cataract. Okay. So, in the history, if they are giving a person of 20 to 40 years of age with some liver disease along with some neuropsychiatric manifestations or Parkinsonism kind of features along with hemolytic anemia, then they are probably pointing to a Wilson's disease, wherein copper is uh, going to be present and increased in numbers while ceruloplasmin is going to be less. So, how do you diagnose Wilson's disease? So, here 
firstly we can measure the cellular plasmon levels which are going to be reduced then the it is not useful to measure the serum copper level so it is going to be variable so serum copper levels are of no use remember that so decrease cellular plasmon levels you can measure other than that you can measure the hepatic or uh, you can take a hepatic biopsy so liver biopsy and and that you can measure for the copper content so increased copper content that is more than 250 microgram of copper per gram of dried liver tissue so this is the criteria so when this this amount of copper is being deposited you can call it as a wilson's disease so this is going to be the most accurate test and the most sensitive test as well while you can also measure the urinary copper excretion so the urinary copper excretion will so will also be elevated in wilson's disease here this is going to be the most specific kind of uh, screening test so for screening you can use this urinary copper excretion so on microscopy on liver biopsy if you see there is going to be this copper deposition in the hepatocytes and this copper will appear like a brownish granular pigment okay so these brownish granular pigment present inside the hepatocytes are copper deposits so these might you might have confuse this with bilirubin or hemochromatosis as well or even lipofusion so all of this is going to have some kind of brownish tinge as well so you will have to look into the history properly to see what kind of pigment is this deposition is there so how do you stain for copper so the special stains or co of copper will be rhodonin stain and also rubyanic acid stain so both rs will be there and it is going to produce a brown colored so this kind of special stain in which the there is brown color pigmentation it is copper deposition so rhodonin or rubyanic stain will stain copper brown other there is another stain you will be confusing with there is an orsine stain so don't confuse with the these stains so or, orsine stain is not going to stain copper it is going to stain the copper associated protein that is ceruloplasmin okay so copper associated protein ceruloplasmin will be stained by orsine and not copper okay other than that orsine can also stain elastin and hepatitis b antigen so hbsag antigen will also be uh, stained with this uh, with the help of this orsine stain so treatment you can use copper chelators like depenicillin and trientin which can take up this copper uh, and cause the excretion of copper